today on CityCast Madison. It's mid-April, which means grumbling for tax day is at its peak. The tax collector tends to get a bad rap. Look no further than the classic Beatles lyrics in Taxman. If you try to sit, I'll tax your seat. If you get too cold, I'll tax the heat. But did you know the Department of Revenue also actually tries to give you money? Well, it's technically your money. And I'm not talking about your tax return. They run a website for unclaimed property. And chances are they have some long lost cash of yours. We asked Aaron Egan with the Department of Revenue how it works. It's Wednesday, April 12th. I'm Bianca Martin, and here's what Madison's talking about. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Bianca. I understand you're handing out money and sometimes (laughs) big bucks, but we're not talking about tax returns. Whose money is this? It's your money. I have your money. (laughs) The National Association of Unclaimed Property Administrators estimates that one in seven people have unclaimed property and they probably don't even know it because it's unclaimed, right? I like to say it's a great way to win the lottery and you don't even have to buy a ticket. Yeah. It's free and easy to claim it. One in seven. That is so wild. So how would I know if I have anything on the list? Go to our website, uh, revenue.wi.gov. Click on the unclaimed property tab. There's a really handy big blue search button or claim and search, something like that. Go into our claim app, look for your name, look for your neighbor's names, look for your friends, look for your family, search everybody you know. Super easy. Once you find your property, you can initiate the claim right from the website. Um, All you have to do is upload a couple of key documents like your driver's license and proof of address that's associated with the property and you submit the claim. It, It literally takes minutes to do. You said, look, you can look up anyone you know, so like your neighbors and stuff. (laughs) Yeah, your family. It's really important when you're looking at unclaimed property. This program has been around since the 70s, and we keep property until people come forward to claim it. So we do have property in our system from as early as 1970. So when you're searching, um, look for deceased relatives, you know, people like that, because we have that kind of stuff, too. Mm. That's a good good thing to add on to the understanding here. What's the most money someone's ever got out of the system? I've seen claims well over a million dollars. There's there's a, an escheated estate property right now that's 1.9 million. That's wow. The biggest single one that I've seen. Yeah. Wow. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you if we go on the website, look up our name and we do find that or our family name, how would I like claim my stuff? Okay. When, once you're on the website, you add the properties to the claim as you're searching, and then there's a little hyperlink that you'd click on the claim property. You do it all right from that same website where you search. You, you just walk walk you right through the claim process. So it's pretty straightforward yep. process. Okay. Yep. And how long might it take to get the money back or property? Uh, we tell people they can expect it in six to eight weeks. It's generally faster than that. We are coming into our busy time of, of year. This is about the time where we start running the, the ads in the newspaper. And then our, our inventory gets up a little bit because people start filing claims then. So, you know, this time of year, the six to eight weeks is a pretty good estimate. You've got this money. You've got this property. You want people to get it back. And so you said a million dollars could be waiting for someone. I mean, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> the average claim is about $1,100. Really? Yeah. I mean, that's not small change in, in, in my book. So no. it's valuable for people to check, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought, that's a root canal. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) Dark. (laughs) No, that's, you know, but for most of it, no, I mean, that's a trip or it's something. That that would be really wonderful news to find that out. And so um, how are you all finding all of this, this last stuff? So every year, businesses are required to do a diligent search of their records and turn over anything that is considered unclaimed property. The most common types of property that we get are things like checking and savings accounts. If you have stocks or mutual funds and you don't cash the dividend checks that you get, that eventually can become unclaimed property. For me personally, I had an overpayment of an insurance premium that I didn't realize that I had. They'd sent me a check. I never cashed it. That got turned in as unclaimed property. It's payroll checks that you can get that that you don't cash. Things like that. We also get 
contents of safe deposit boxes. If you don't pay the rent on the safe deposit box, we get that too as unclaimed property. But the vast majority of, of stuff that we get is cash. And so you mentioned you're charged with the safe deposit boxes. What's the strangest thing you, or weirdest, most uncommon thing you've ever found while cleaning them out? Well, we should have a reality show, I feel. <laughs> really? It, it's just, people are so weird. Gold teeth are very common. Okay. That stopped being weird. I, I have to be honest with you. We get so many of them. It's like, oh, here's another tooth. Whatever. Toenail clippings were probably no. one of the grossest. Yes. No. Why? Why are you paying money to save that? Why? Right. There was one person that had a big box, big box of rocks. Okay. Different kinds of rocks. So I'm thinking if you're paying money to keep these rocks in a safe deposit box, these have to be valuable rocks. And so the law says that we have to hold the contents for three years to try to give the owner an opportunity to come forward and get their actual contents. After three years, we send stuff to auction and then they get the cash if they come forward. Well, um, before we sent this stuff to auction, we make a determination whether or not it's valuable. And so with this big box of rocks, I was absolutely convinced that these rocks are crystals or (laughs) correct. The, I, the, these must be moon rocks. I mean, why is someone paying money for this? So we invited somebody from the UW geology department to come over, you know, to help us figure out what these were. And the guy's sitting there and he brings all his equipment and, you know, he's like sorting everything out because they're all different kinds of rocks. And I'm helping the guy and I'm covered with dirt. And I mean, these were gross, d- dirty, disgusting rocks. And and I swear to God, we did this for a couple hours. And, and at the end, he's like, it's industrial slag. It's probably slightly radioactive. <laughs> and I, I just looked down at my hands and he goes, oh, don't worry about it. It's There's more of this stuff out in the environment than you realize. Uh, okay. Okay. Thanks, what, what should we do with these? Go dump them in the parking lot. They're not worth anything. All right. So I'm not going to turn into Spider-Man. Um, right. Anything crazy is going to happen. That's wild. I like love rocks and geology. So part of me is <laughs> like, oh, I get it. And then it's like, oh, well, there's people are weird. That's just, yeah. <laughs> there was one that he said they would sell in their gift shop for 25 cents. It was kind of pink. It was kind of pretty. Oh. One out of this big, gigantic box. 25 cents. Is that kind of typical that you uh, and you need an assessor, like a specialist for the item? No, that was kind of a unique no. one. Yeah, that was a unique one because um, we use an auction house, the Wisconsin Surplus folks out of Mount Horeb, and they're really good, easy to work with. So basically anything that we think might have value, we send to them. Um, And if it sells at auction, it sells. And if it doesn't, we just get it back. You just Um, get it back? Yeah. And And then then you hold on to it? Oh, then you throw it away. away. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Because, I mean, if our, the the law says we have to sell anything of value and, you know, the fact that it gets put up for auction a couple of times and no one bids on it, you know, obviously there's no value. People don't want it. Let's take a quick break and then we'll be right back with Aaron Egan of the Department of Revenue. UW-Madison is a bona fide research powerhouse. As a devout science enthusiast, I get chills sometimes just walking across campus. Knowing I'm in the midst of groundbreaking discoveries is, well, electrifying. UW does this great yearly event, the UW-Madison Science Expeditions, where you can literally get a piece of the action and visit the places and people doing the work. The variety of programming is kind of remarkable. It's a multi-day open house at more than 20 locations across campus. And you can see firework reactions in a jar, hold and feel organs, and ponder the limits of the universe at Washburn Observatory. The UW-Madison Science Expeditions is happening this weekend, the 14th through the 16th, and all events are free and open to the public. For a complete schedule, visit science.wisc.edu. Don't miss out, y'all. I feel like you had another story you were Oh yeah. I was telling Dylan when I talked to him last week about the dynamite. Do you want to hear that story? Yes, yes. Oh, it was terrible. So I'm I'm sitting here in my office and they were going through the the boxes. When the boxes first come in, we have to do an inventory of the boxes and look at what we actually got compared to what the bank said that they sent us. Because a lot of times we get like cash and savings bonds and jewelry. And so it's really important that we are reconciling what we actually have with what they say they sent in case valuables go missing. Right. So we we were going through this process 
and I wasn't helping this day because it was tax season and I was busy, right? And and my my staff walk in with this little bucket and they set it on my desk and then they scurried to the, back to my door and they they were like peeking around the corner <laughs> and I'm like, what are you guys doing? They're like, look inside. So I I lifted up the lid of this and I peeked in and I'm like, I don't know what this is. Is this fireworks? And they're like, we don't know. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? They're like, we don't know either. That's why we gave it to you. So I'm like, okay, fine. So I literally pick up the phone. I don't I love that for police. you. It, it gets better. Okay. So I call the Capitol Police and I literally say to them, I'm a girl. I don't know what this stuff is. I think it's fireworks. Can you send somebody over to help me? You can tell me what this is. That is a move that works. <laughs> help, woman. <laughs> we'll be there. <laughs> 10 minutes later, I, I and I, I completely forget about it again because it's tax season and I'm busy. And, and I go back to work and 10 minutes later, my phone rings. It's the receptionist downstairs. And, and she says to me, the bomb squad is here for you. Oh, no. What? I didn't call the bomb squad. I called the Capitol Police. What happened? And they're like, well, they sent the bomb squad. As it turns out, it was quarter sticks of dynamite. Oh, my god. That gosh. someone had sent in via UPS. That's not cool. That's very yeah. uncool. So then I had to email the bank and go, dear bank person, please do not send dynamite through the mail because it's going to be dangerous. P.S. Rude. Right. Love you. <laughs> Love you. Oh, my gosh. So you've got radioactive sediment on you. You're getting <laughs> dynamite. Your coworkers are dropping it off, <laughs> looking around the corner what they think is going to explode. <laughs> we have a lot of fun with this, though. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's never a dull moment. Oh, the other thing. Um, we get letters that people put in their safe deposit boxes. And a lot of times it's letters from like cheating spouses and like, and those are always the funnest. I have one that um, a guy was writing to his girlfriend swearing that he was never going to cheat on her ever again. And if he did, he would pay her $1,000 a day. The letter is notarized, which is the best part about it. And, and you know, sounds healthy. Right. <laughs> I wonder how this ended. I don't think it ended well. Something with the dynamite. <laughs> have there ever been any items that have moved you personally? Yeah, the worst. I have kids. The worst stuff that we get is the baby pictures and the little locks of baby hair. Because that's stuff that won't bring anything at auction. And that's stuff that we have to throw away because we don't have space. We are constantly getting boxes every single year. And we have two little closets here that we have, you know. So, the yeah. And like ribbons from kids, track meets and stuff from when they were they're younger. And, you know, this meant something to somebody that they put this in this box and we end up just tossing it. That's the worst. But what are you going to do, right? Yeah, that's tough. So how much of the lost items actually get claimed? Our rate of return for the cash type properties is pretty good. We're one of the best states in the country. All right. So that's good. We're generally between 60 and 65% of the property we we collect every year. We get back to people. We were the first state in the country that started doing automated data matching. So if you file a tax return, we check against unclaimed property. And if we can find a match, we just send you a check if the property is under $2,000. So that's we were the first state that did that. And, and that's really boosted our rate of return. We might have your things. Even if you looked last year and you didn't have any, check again because we're always getting new stuff. And how much money are you returning each year, typically? Um, between 30 to $35 million in a typical year. Um, I suspect this next year is going to be up just because we took in so much more money. Is there a time limit on claiming your money? No, no, no. We hold money forever. And even with the, the safe deposit box contents in the third year, the stuff that we send to auction, if we get $1,000 for your box... We hold the thousand dollars until you come forward to claim it, and we hold that forever. Oh wow, wow, yep. yeah, you're for the people. <laughs> <laughs> so the revenue department, you collect taxes, which you know is sometimes that's a complicated thing how people feel about that. The tax man, etc. But this is kind of fun. Do you get do you get to have fun with this? Do you ever see anyone's reactions? Um. It's kind of interesting because I, you know, I run tax processing and so we're used to dealing with taxpayers. We were doing that before we got this unclaimed property program. Generally, when it, when a taxpayer calls us, they're a a little bit scared, you know, because we're the Department of Revenue. They expect us to be mean and like, "Eh." so when they call us for help and we're nice to them, they're like, oh, you're the best. With unclaimed property, I swear to God, it does weird things to people because 
people feel very entitled. You have my stuff. Why do you have my stuff? Give me my money back right now. You know, and it, it was completely the opposite reaction. I, taxpayers are, are a little bit easier to deal with than some of the claimants. Not all. I mean, most of the claimants are wonderful people, you know, but because we have property for so long, we get claims for like, my name is Aaron Egan. I'm not the only Aaron Egan in Wisconsin. There are there are other people with my name and we will see people that will file claims for property that was turned over before they were born. And they're like, that's mine. Give it to me. Um, no, it's not because you didn't exist when we got this property. But, you know, that's the that's the kind of dynamic that we get sometimes with with, with unclaimed property that we don't see with tax, which is kind of interesting. Mm, that is interesting, especially like maybe it's 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 loved ones. I mean, and then, that, you know, and people are passing away. This this sort of weird energy comes up about stuff and what's mine. Another kind of uncomfortable dynamic we we get airship claims for people who are deceased. But that's what we call, you know, when heirs are coming forward to, to file claims. We ask if they have siblings sometimes with, with, with some of the stuff that we, we have to do when we're processing these claims. When we first got the program, we used to distribute the money proportionately to heirs. And I can't tell you how many times people forgot that they had siblings. Oh, no, I'm the only one. So we'd pay 100% out to the claimant and then, you know, their brother would come forward. I didn't get my money. Where's my money? Oh, well, your sibling conveniently forgot about you. I mean, it brings out the ugly side of people. You're you're right about that. Uh, well, we don't do that anymore. Man, you're doing you're doing the work. <laughs> What's your favorite part of this job? Every day is different and every day is interesting. I, I do like the safe deposit boxes too. I mean, that's one of my favorite days of the year when we start looking through that stuff just to see what, what people are are holding and what they turn over. Um, one of the neatest things I ever got, we had a land deed from the 1850s that had been signed by James Buchanan, like from when the settlers took the got the property from the government, you know, back long, long ago. I mean, just stuff like that is just incredibly cool, you know? It's a time capsule. Mm-hmm. Right. And we had... Um, Colonial money from the 1780s or 1700s. Oh my gosh! Isn't that crazy? Yes. Oh my gosh! You got you got a treasure department. We did. We were lucky. We we were able to track that that owner of that property down before that went to auction because we were like, this is such a valuable thing that we don't want to just you know we we need to try to get this back to whoever lost it because this is a really neat thing. So that guy was very touched because it was his his father's and he hadn't realized that the property had been turned over to us. So that was really good. Mm. Aaron, thank you so much for telling us about this, this program and this system and hearing these stories has been really, really fun. Awesome. Thank you, Bianca. That's Aaron Egan, Director of Tax Operations for the Wisconsin Department of Revenue. We'll link to the department's unclaimed property website in our show note. If you want to check out what might be waiting for you. Good luck, my friend. And here's what else Madison's talking about. The Midwest being that chick. The bell of the ball, shall we say. Democrats just announced that they will hold their national political convention in Chicago next summer. That'll be in August, one month after the Republicans host their convention in Milwaukee. Pretty clear how important us Wisconsin and Lake Michigan Coasties are to the next presidential hopeful. Are you blushing or is it just me? Speaking of beaming, as of today, April 12th, the colorful sunburst chairs are back at the Memorial Union. That's right, the UW Memorial Union Terrace reopens for the warm season. And that means union staff are bringing out the 2000 green, orange and yellow seats to the beautiful lakeside of Mendota. And this Friday the 14th, the outdoor brat stand will also reopen. So go grab your chair, grab your brat, grab your beer, whatever you need, and hang at the terrace, cause it's a staple of Madison Summers for a reason. It's magical. That's all for today here on CityCast Madison. I'm Bianca Martin. If you enjoyed the show, why not tell someone on the Bomb Squad about us? But do not send us dynamite. We don't want it. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more stories from around the city. Until then, don't blow a fuse. Get your
your money. 